What up, T-Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All Tea, All Shade, Baddies Caribbean Reunion Part 2 Recap. Part 2, I want to say, was better than Part 1 for me. They really let the girls get active, and I was here for every second of it, okay? But first, I want to let you guys know that this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central Time, I will be dropping the first episode back of Ask Keisha and Mo. When I tell y'all, y'all showed up and showed out with these questions, you do not want to miss the first episode. That's all I got to say. And then we'll be following up with episode two this Friday um, at 6 p.m. Central Time because I won't be doing a Spill the Tea Live Friday. I'll be joining you all Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time for Spill the Tea Live. So Friday, be looking out for Ask Keisha and Mo, uh, second episode at 6 p.m. Central Time. But let's get into this baddies review. When we start back up again, we have Meatball versus Jayla Round Do. okay? And let me just start off by saying, because I didn't point this out last week, that why was Meatball up here looking like Scuba Steve? <laughs> Why did she come with that scuba shirt on looking like a scuba instructor? Where were you going, ma'am? Like, why was that your fighting outfit? Where did you get that from? You're not going to let me believe that Meatball went to a store and bought that. Somebody gave that to her. One of her drunk uncles or a crackhead from Philly gave that girl that dang on scuba shirt. I was just so enamored by it. It was like, Almost like classic and legendary because I've never seen no foolishness like that before in my life. And then it looked like it was a size medium. It was too small for her. She all brolic and shit looking like Beanie Siegel. <laughs> I'm like, where the rest of the state property at? Oh my God. But anywho, so they go up. Round two, and I got to give round two to Meatball because she was connecting more to Jayla's face. Jayla was more so like trying to figure her out and trying to, you know, do that little one arm move that she's so used to. But with somebody like Meatball who fight, doom, 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 that wasn't going to work. So she was trying to like hold her and, you know, use her right hand, but it, it just wasn't working. So I'm going to give round two to meatball then we have meatball versus tink round four if i'm not mistaken round four i'm gonna give it to meatball because she used that chair <laughs> on tinka tinka came over there with some like stick thing in her hand and meatball picked up one of the chairs and like tried to like hit her with it or whatever and I was like, oh, God, yeah, this friendship will never go back to the way it was. Y'all using weapons on each other and stuff? Like, oh, my word, is it that deep? But Meatball said, it's deeper than a chain. Y'all don't get it. It's go deeper than a chain. And I was like, okay. All right, Beanie, calm down. Meanwhile, Saucy and that too tight dress that he had on, was going up for Meatball. So I was like, Meatball, Meatball, Meatball. The crowd was hyping Meatball up and everything. I must say that I love Saucy Santana as a host. Janisha was not needed. Bring Saucy back every reunion. He was lit. He was with the shit. He was instigating. He was telling it like it was. He was invested, honey. That's the type of host that we needed. It was like Janisha who, Janisha just pretty. You, Janisha just come out and be Vanna White. Just here, look at the board, look at the screen. Like pretty outfits, pretty jewels. Other than that, Janisha was not needed, honey. Saucy was given what was needed, okay? Meatball starts to cry though because once again, this is more than a chain. This is more than about a chain. <laughs> You know, this is a real friendship here. And she gets really emotional. And Tommy, Tommy actually spoke some sense to her. She pulled her to the side and was like, look, 
Don't do nothing you're not comfortable with. Don't let these people hype you up. This this television show, the cameras hyping you up to fight somebody that you called a friend. If you don't want to fight her, don't fight her. Let her crash out. Let her act like a test dummy. You don't have to do that. You know, you can go on stage and talk to her. You don't have to do nothing you don't want to do. I see you a real one, you know, don't do it. And I was like, that's real true tea because everybody else around them, pretty much everybody, not all of the people, were amping them up to fight one another. You know what I'm saying? And there was a sisterhood and a friendship there. There were certain people on stage that didn't want to see them fight, which was like Scotty. And I even want to say like Natalie and Sapphire and them did not want to see them fight. But in the midst of their conversation, Meatball just clicked out and was like, fuck. <laughs> everybody was like what just happened Jesus like she just spazzed out and she was like she don't regret what happened she don't want to be friends with Tinka no more like she good she was like you know there was a friend I didn't want to fight her but I don't regret it and it was just a lot of hurt there I don't know where Tinka Bell went I just know that at one point she fell out and security picked her up and took her backstage and she was gone for the rest of the episode, child. I don't know what happened. But um, Diamond the Body come out, child, dressed like the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. I'm like, where are you going, Miss Girl? Looking like a whole ghetto flamingo. She looked a mess. Who in they wrong mind, because whoever made that for her was not in their right mind, made that monstrosity of an outfit for this girl. It was a see-through lace, hot pink, Pepto-Bismol jumpsuit with fur at the end of the sleeves and on the ankles. And then she paired it like with some Air Force Ones because she knew she was going to be fighting. And then a bust down wig, hot pink wig at that. That was like crinkly. I mean, oh my gosh, she looked a wreck. She looked a fool. She looked like a big two liter bottle of Fanta. <laughs> she looked a mess, okay? A mess. And you couldn't tell her she wasn't eating the girls up, okay? She came out there. Who want to fade? Let's get to it. Who want to fade? And I was like, girl, you are wishing for your wish okay all right Tasiki was like what's up because she was ready for the smoke okay she fall in line you know they putting their dukes up or whatever they trying to get active or whatever but they were standing on the area rug and the area rug kept on moving because they didn't have anything underneath it to keep it stuck to the floor i don't know why anybody in production didn't think about that they make little stickies that you can put underneath the rug so it won't move but anywho so they was trying to, you know, fight or whatever. Tzatziki was, you know, bop, bop. Step back. Come on. Come on. I'm ready to eat. Arr, I'm ready to eat. Arr, arr, I'm about to eat you up. I'm about to eat you up. You can't fight, girl. I'm about to eat you up. And I was like, she's hungry. <laughs> this hungry, hungry hippo is about to you up. <laughs> so... Tommy, I don't know if Tommy was trying to referee, break up the fight, but all I know is she ended up falling and her legs just went whoop <laughs> in the air. She looked like a little weeble wobble. I'm like, Tommy, if you don't go sit your drunk down somewhere, you and your drunk vagina. So she move out the way. Diamond keep on trying to pause the fight and she telling production, you know, the rug is slipping, the rug is slipping. No, you're slipping because she about the dog walk. So as soon as they rolled that rug up, baby, Tzatziki went the bop, 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 bam, boom, a tutti fruity, oh, Rudy, <laughs> she started whooping her ass. She beat, beat her ass so hard that Diamond, like, kind of, like, got woozy, like, she almost dropped. She tried to regain her composure, but Tasiki just kept on bink binking her ass to the point where she fell into the chair and Tasiki got on top of her and just started beating her ass or whatever. So security separated them. Diamond lip was busted. At this point, her tooth wasn't missing. It was just she had a busted lip. 
She didn't have a black eye either at this point. So I guess that's going to come on part three, child. But after my lip was busted like that, I would have just said, you know what? I did my duty. I'm out of here. <laughs> but she wanted more smoke. So I'm just looking at all the girls who wigs came off. And I'm just like, why on all of these little ghetto reality shows? Why is it that nobody braid down be fresh? Everybody her be looking like they straight off, off the boat. <laughs> Everybody her be looking like Kunta Kente underneath them um, wigs. I'm like, what is going on? Do y'all just be taking off a wig and then slapping another one on? Taking off a wig and slapping another one on? Scalp musty? crusty dandruff beady beads i'm like y'all y'all always talking about some y'all the baddest and y'all getting to a bag but can't even get fresh braids okay Whew. so diamond the body end up going backstage after her lip got busted <clears throat> and she just started walking down backstage and just undressing in front of everybody no bra on no panties on and putting on a whole new outfit, child, in front of security. She didn't even waste time going to the bathroom, going to a dressing room, or nothing. I'm like, girl, did she knock the Mario coins out of you? Like, what is happening? Diamond comes back out on stage once she didn't change into her athleisure wear. Natalie refuses to fight her. Natalie was like, you're not going to gain no clout out for me just because of an unfollow. We're not doing that or whatever. You know, after the reunion film, Natalie and Roly was trolling Diamond on social media and everything. Natalie ended up, you know, apologizing to her. I think they all good now. Whatever. So... Diamond then fights Slim. This is round one for them. And I'm going to say Diamond won the beginning of that fight. Her hits were connecting in the beginning, whereas towards the very end of that fight, Slim start hitting her with some uppercuts when security got in between them. So I'm going to give the first quarter of that fight um to diamond and then that last little stretch i gotta give to slim then round two nobody won no nobody won that child the air won round two then here goes slim talking to the audience i told y'all i was drunk i told y'all i was drunk i just wanted y'all to see girl we ain't seen nothing because you can't fight girl just big for nothing <laughs> like no so then Gretch come out looking like a little scarecrow, looking like she just want to be like, he's on down, he's on down the road. Like, girl, you need to be a witch every Halloween, okay? Because you already built like one. Built like one, face like one, like, just no. So as soon as she come out, she start popping into Jayla. She ready. So she run up on Jayla, and they get to fighting, and then here come Callie, running across the stage looking like Dr. Doolittle <laughs> trying to jump Jayla. And I was like, we jumping now? This what we doing? Huh? And so when she ran over there trying to jump Jayla, of course, security at this point had already jumped in trying to separate them. And uh, one of the security guards tried to get Callie, but she ended up like, almost like falling over one of the little tables, side tables. And so Sapphire ended up putting her in a little chokehold and grabbed her and like slammed her on the ground. And I'm like, exactly, because we're not about to be jumping nobody. Like, come on now. That's, that's whack. Whack AF, okay? We're not about to do that. And so round two, Scotty tries to stop Gretch from scratching Jayla's face, right? Because uh, they end up fighting. Jayla got her down on the couch and <clears throat> Gretch, I guess, was trying to scratch and claw at Jayla's face and Scotty jumped in and was like, no, she trying to scratch her face or whatever. And I'm like, I don't know if the rumors are true about um, Scotty supposedly being pregnant because she was trying to break up numerous fights. Now, she didn't ever fight herself, but she kept on 
trying to stop fights. And I know if I was pregnant, I wouldn't be trying to stop nobody's fight, you know, with the risk of me getting hurt. So I don't know if she's pregnant or not, but I know for a fact that she and Lemmy are still going very strong. Uh, Lemmy and Anna still messing around. I just saw a video with them at a club and they caught her on camera, Anna saying, baby, baby. And then when she saw the cameras looking, she was like, Lemmy, baby, Lemmy, baby. Girl, these heifers, I don't know why they just don't become a throuple because y'all all messing with this little pip squeak of a man that ain't even attractive. But okay, I guess the money make them worth it. But whatever. So in the midst of round two of the fight, they end up rolling on the floor and Gretch had her hand in Jayla's mouth. Don't know how that happened, why it happened, what she was doing, but Jayla was literally trying to gnaw her fingers off. And then when security pulled Gretch from off of Jayla, you know, pulled them apart, her tooth popped out. And she hurried up and grabbed it off the floor because at first I thought it was just her mic pack. But she didn't care about the mic pack. She only went for this little, this little nodule. <laughs> so Saucy peeped and he was like, y'all see that? Jayla tooth came out. Gretchen pulled her tooth out. And so Natalie then was like, for real? He was like, yeah. So Jayla hurried up and went backstage or whatever. She was pissed. She was angry because her face had scratches on and she was bleeding a little bit or whatever. Um, now, after the altercation, she did say that it was a tooth and that she had just had some dental work done and she had a, a, a temporary tooth in or something like that. She might have veneers. So that's probably what it was. Um, you know, people veneers and stuff be coming off and all types of stuff. But anywho, so... Saucy check all of them was like, y'all was supposed to dust her when she jumped in. Y'all don't want to see Callie. I'm disappointed in y'all. And I was like, exactly. Y'all want to talk all this baddie, baddie, shot o'clock. We sisters, we, we friends. But y'all going to let Callie try to jump, Jayla? That's what we doing? Now, she the closest with Sapphire, Scotty, and Natalie. Sapphire was the only one that really had her back back. Natalie didn't do nothing. Scotty, I mean, at least tried to pull Gretch off of her when she was trying to scratch her. But I'm talking about running a fade fade. You know what I'm saying? Only person that I feel like didn't have to do that is Sapphire because she at least put old girl in a chokehold. But the rest of them heifers didn't do nothing because y'all supposed to be friends with her like that and y'all didn't do nothing when she tried to jump y'all home, girl. Yeah, y'all whack. So... Saucy even said to Janisha, he was like, Janisha, you can sit them cars down, girl. <laughs> Cause Saucy had taken over, honey. Like Janisha just was a cute little statue at some point. A little cute little peacock. So then Roly, Anna, and Asian doll come out. And Anna goes over and says hi to everybody, including Scotty. They hug each other. They good now. You know, they okay being sister wives, all right? And it's obvious that Janisha don't really have a problem with Anna, even though she know Anna messing with Lemmy. She at least acknowledges her and talks to her, but her and Scotty don't acknowledge each other at all, at all. So Callie um, immediately presses Anna over the Mariah Lynn mama fight situation and was like, you know, Mariah's story kept on changing. Mine never did. And I didn't feel, I didn't like the fact that you were quest questioning my, character and my integrity or whatever Anna apologizes it's all good between them so Tommy and Roly addressed their issues about an altercation that happened when they was in London where Tommy allegedly left her and she was fighting Chris Brown partners or security guard by herself and a child they was going back and forth back and forth and at one point Tommy said you look very much the same <laughs> Roly, Lord, po Roly, po Roly, po Roly, child, that was funny. So Nunu comes out and her Lululemon <laughs> with a bandage on her hand. I'm like, what? So as soon as she come out, she looking at looking around the stage for Anna. Saucy Thompson, there she goes. She right there. She right there. She right there. <laughs> Saucy is a mess. So. 
They go heads up round one. Round one, I felt like was a tie because they both was getting it in. They both was getting it in. Like I rewound it several times and I felt like they both was just doing they both. Like they was doing a big one. Then round two, I got to give it to Anna. Anna, I rewound, rewinded that second round several times. And if you watch it, Anna's hits was like really connecting. Like she had new, new head bouncing, boom, bing, bow. Like Anna little self was getting it in. She was getting active. So I'm going to give round two to Anna, but they both did. They, you know, they big one. It really wasn't one. It really wasn't a situation where it was like a clear, I whooped your ass type situation. So, all of a sudden, Jayla returned to the set in a new white outfit coming out look like a disgruntled clout. <laughs> and she tried to sneak Callie, but it doesn't work. So, Gretch ended up throwing something at her backstage. Tommy get mad at Biggie for hugging Roly, and then she on stage mean mugging Roly child, and Roly presses her about it. They gonna end up fighting on part three. I can't wait to see that. And then the other replacements join on stage. You got Heaven, J-O, uh, what's that other girl name? Kiva. They all join. And I, where is Dia? Dia, whatever her name is. I know she was there, but they all join and... Next thing you know, J.O. just big, 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 Biggie real quick, real quick. But I heard that, you know, Biggie refused to fight. She didn't want to fight nobody. But I'm confused. Like, what did Biggie do to J.O.? I'm so confused. But, child, I'm ready for part three. Part two was great. I'm going to give it an A. The girls showed up and showed out. I love the studio audience. Keep Santana as the host moving forward. Y'all let me know down below in the comment section what you guys thought about Baddie's Caribbean Part 2, Reunion Part 2. Let's talk about it down below in the comment section. Please make sure to thumbs up this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on your post notifications so you know when my videos drop. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.